So I'm thinking I'm going to do the tractor work here where the S10 normally sits. I'd like to actually get grasses cut, but the other actually part of me wants to get this done so I can just have fun and cut grass and uh, sell this damn thing. Let's see how the battery did. Oh. Take a pretty decent charge. Let's see if we can get her started. Not really sure the starting protocol on this thing. I guess we're going to figure it out together. I should probably check to see if there's even water in there. I didn't bring any ramps with me. Oh, it's actually green. It's really surprising, honestly. Where's the choke on this thing? Kidding. I'll set you down for just a minute. Let's see what we can get going. I think I was a new YouTuber or something. I thought the camera was recording. I ended up just pushing this thing off the trailer. The trailer was disconnected from the truck. I figured it's close enough to the ground, so neutral, gave it a push, and it just rolled right off. The front of the trailer popped up for like half a second, but ah, like I said, you think I was new at this. So I got a little oil leak. The oil pressure gauge is leaking. But that's an easy enough fix. Splash the daylights out of some dizzle here. I don't know. Let's see if I can slam this thing in the garage. These welds are glorious. Look at that. <clears throat> oh, this thing's just cute enough to keep. Needs tires though. I mean, they hold air. I'm torn. I'm torn. I don't know. We'll see. If the guy comes by. Whatever. If I get rid of it this trip, I'm going to get rid of it. No regrets. If I don't get rid of it this trip, I'm going to keep it. Because I'm stupid.
buddy. She doesn't know. She was chasing around cows last night until the cows decided to bow up against her. But a good puppy. She gets so excited to be up here. Who's your pretty dog? <sighs> so, sorry to swing you guys around. All right, let's get some air. And, uh... Figure it out. All right, I don't know what this is. Oh, that's the hold down. Never mind. <laughs> Disconnect this. It looks like we need to do the throttle linkage, fuel line. I'm assuming this is the oil pump for the three point. I'm not sure where to break that. Probably going to do this clamp here, that there, pull the tank. Come around to this side. This is just my guess. I guess I could have looked on the interweb. Pull the starter. That's the uh, cable for the tack. A little handful of electrical here. For the most part, I'm going to disconnect, just unscrew this whole gauge cluster, set it aside. Uh, steering arm. Drive shaft. I don't know what any of this crap is for. Tail lights, maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna clean some of this stuff up. You know, it's been uh, it's been got a bit of a ranch rebuild thing going here. So let's uh, let's figure this out. We'll be right back. Okay, so a little bit into it. Got the fuel tank removed. I'm saving these hydraulic lines for last. I suspect they're gonna make the most mess. I just kind of poked around with things, checking out the wiring. It's not charging the battery, but truth be told, all you need to do is get this engine to spin. Um, I believe these are the power wires. Again, I should have probably checked into this before I tore this thing apart, but eh, we'll figure it out. This probably comes off the mag, or the mag, this drive right here. I don't even know what to call it, this thing, right? This is obviously the throttle. Uh, but these are factory wires, I'm assuming, they're power, there's nothing to, the battery just goes, this goes straight to the starter, and again, this thing's been farmerized pretty heavy, I did the push button, starter is there, I don't know, I'll figure that out when we get back, I think, the oil pressure line, I deceed it, I'm going to end up shortening it, they had it all tied into a knot, so I'm going to actually cut it, this little uh, ferrule, is that what this is called? I don't know, this little brass deal right here. I'm not thinking straight right now, but I'm not sure why. Words are hard to me, maybe I'm having a stroke. Maybe, I don't know. Um, water temperature sensor, you see this thermal wire. I don't even know if that works. I didn't really run it long enough to get the the head hot. So, the uh, got a puller, a little bit of lube. An easy puller, a couple taps with a hammer, a little spray with some peanut butter blaster, and this arm came right off. That's the tack. Yeah, so I'm going to unbolt right now. I'm going to unbolt the starter. Just start loosening these guys. I'm going to pull the drive shaft. And uh, I'll bring you back when I get a little more done. Oof, little play. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, this thing's got to go. Oh boy, we have made a mess. So, as I suspected, it's not the clutch that failed. Hell, it's not even the pressure plate that failed. It's the, uh, there's something mechanical in the clutching mechanism itself. That's not, I don't know, but we got acorns in here that have been in here a long time. So some creature got in here, made a home. We're going to vacuum this out. I want to see what is... <clears throat> I need two hands that are not greasy. To figure out why this thing slid off. I think this carrier for the throw-up bearing uh, is what slipped. I think it just fell off of here. That's what I'm guessing. Oh, no. Oh, no. See that? Oh, no. we got shear pin nets. Oh, see, we're missing a... Those little split pins. They broke. Okay. All right. Mechanical failure. 
However, because I went ahead and bought a damn clutch, I'm going to put it in. So let me get a cleaning in here. We'll see. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. So I've got the pins in place for the clutch little throw out arm there and this is usually See this is usually when I make a mistake normally I would I should just put this back together But uh, I did buy the clutch and this is usually where things get bad <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I should just put it back together. I know everything in there is lined up I know that clutch works Obviously because it drove me around just fine, but I do have a brand new one in there with its adjoining parts and If I told the guy that I'm gonna put a new clutch in it, I'm gonna put a new clutch in it. So That's me. What are you gonna do? This is easy enough. Tap this bearing out pop the new one in I suppose I should see to make sure it's the same right at least I've got a, an alignment pin. I thought about it when this thing came. I'm like, man, it didn't even come with an alignment pin. However, drive shaft is going to be what the alignment pin is. Right? Right? Didn't know that. I guess I should have read the instructions before I got up here. So let me see. This guy bought it from Jeff's Tractors on eBay. Clutch. You guys all saw this last night. There it is. That looks about right. Close enough for government work. All right, I'm gonna set you down. We're gonna pull this apart. Let's see together. And I'm, I'm sorry that you missed the actual splitting of the tractor. It might have been comical. It went rather smoothly, but looks like the critters have definitely gotten in here and made their homes. Homes. Let me set you down. suspected this looks like this got a little bit hot it's got some bluing in it so it's not in the best shape friction disc fine probably lasts a lifetime of this guy but what are you gonna do I'll sell it with the track it'll go with the tractor so they can have a spare I suppose all right we're gonna clean this up and pull that bushing out and uh, reassemble so we're going to get it with a little bit of emery cloth, just sand it off. There are no marks or anything on there. It just looks like some surface rust and some junk that's been on there for a long time because this thing has sat out in the field for years. And then I hit it with some brake clean because it doesn't leave any kind of oily residue. To remove a pilot bushing or a pilot bearing, here's the quick down and dirty easy way to do it. I've always had really good success with this. You pack the, you pack the end of the crank there with grease and then you put a rod or you put a, uh, an extension for a socket extension. In my case, I had the drive shaft right there, which I knew fit tight. So you wanna make sure whatever you put in there is solid and it fits snug because when you tap it, the high D, I guess it's hydraulic pressure, but the back pressure of the grease trying to find its room somewhere pushes that bushing out. And uh, there you go, it came out really easy. It took about two minutes and eight seconds. That was, of course, sped up, but in, in real time, it was, took about two minutes and eight seconds worth of video to get that thing out. I did put a little bit of grease on the new Pilot bushing. See how nicely it fits? A uh, little bit of grease on the crank itself. You don't want to put too much because then you'll run into the same problem. Well, not the same problem, but the same situation you have when you were removing the old one. Too much grease in that hole will not allow that Pilot bushing to seat completely, and then you're going to put some... Uh, some pressure on uh, anyway the the shaft the input shaft of the transmission won't seat properly so i did start it with the drive shaft i'm hitting it with a brass hammer so i'm not dinging up the splines i got it to seat flush to the back of the flywheel or the back of the crank excuse me and uh life is good we will continue on with the reassembly process so the old pressure plate had 
two alignment pins, two dowel pins that are tapped into the back of this flywheel. And I keep checking the clock position of the new pressure plate because I couldn't capture both pins. I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing something wrong. But if you can see on the on the video there, the six and twelve o'clock position of that flywheel have these have uh, dowel pins tapped in, and um, that's why I was fumbling around with it. It caught the twelve o'clock dowel pin. It would only catch one, and then the other one is just to the left of that bottom bolt. It's not interfering with the new pressure plate in any way. There just there just wasn't a a hole that contacted the surface of the flywheel that slid into that dowel pin. So that's why I was fumbling around with it initially. And I do a cross tightening pattern. I'm sure there are torque specs for this. They're usually 35, 40 pounds, I believe is what my Toyota is. Last time I did a clutch on my little Toyota truck. Uh, I just did snug, tight, you do gradual tightening on the uh, cross pattern like that, just so you don't bend anything. And then I just gave it a quick little blurp with that small gun there. I think that gun puts about 55 foot pounds. Uh, which is probably too much, but you know, what are you going to do when you don't read the instructions? You just kind of go with what works. Spins a lot nicer than the other one. So we got the new throw out bearing, the pilot bushing, pressure plate, friction disc, all installed. I'm going to put a couple dollops. Get that out of the way first. Oh yeah, giggity giggity. All right, can you all stay there? This whole thing kicked over. So you're going to see that I pull that drive shaft out, that input shaft out, and throw out bearing carrier. Apparently at that angle and with everything cleaned and greased up, that cast housing, that slug that sits on the forks, that throw out fork, everything slid back and, and slid off. So I had to reduce the angle of the back half of the tractor there and then put everything back in so everything stays to quit I want it to stay. Now you'll see I struggled with this thing for quite some time. The angle of the dangle is what's messing me up. Trying to get the front half into the correct angle to line up with the back half of the tractor proved to be quite tricky, slightly frustrating, uh, created some minor soft tissue damage, um, which you'll, you'll see later in this video here. I mean, it seems so simple, but this truly would have been an easier job if I had a friend to help me. But now the engine is up too high well, I'll let you guys just watch and, and get some enjoyment to watch me sweating in this 98 degree afternoon. You know what? I'll be honest with you. This camera's irritating me right now. I'm going to shut the camera off and uh, I'll bring you back when we get it together. I need to turn my music on and concentrate. <laughs> job with two people.
but what are you gonna do? You don't have friends, you make do with what you do. I should say when you don't have friends, local. Anyway, uh, let me finish the final hookup. Let's get the tack hooked up. Not worried about the power right this minute. Let's put some battery in this thing. See if we can get her to start. See if we can get her to move. Well, I think that's everything. I gotta tie this wire up, button everything up, make it nice and neat. But what I wanna do is fire it off, first of all. It sure feels like. It feels like we have a clutch. like a champ. Oh yeah. This is how it's gonna go. The, whatever they have there, the mag, whatever's producing 12 volts, a stator, these guys here, this one produces enough charge, the red wire produces enough charge to, uh, or enough voltage to charge a battery. This one, the yellow one only gets up to um, about 10 and a half volts. I'm not sure why that would be the case, but it is. So I'm assuming this had a key switch at some point in time. If I hook this up to the battery now to try to charge a battery, there'll be a constant drain into that mag. So I'm not going to hook the charging system up. I'll let him know. Um, yeah, because there's a couple things. There's that compression release, which is that hole. And there's another hole here, which was probably a key switch to, or maybe this was a key switch at some point in time. This was probably the key switch, honestly. And then when you turn on the key, it connects that voltage to the battery or that wire to the battery. Um, cause you certainly don't need, you don't need anything to start this. You just need to turn the engine. So. That's what I'm guessing, but it doesn't leak oil. When I first fired it up this trip, it leaked out of the oil pressure gauge. Doesn't do that. The thing fires right up quite nicely. I like that idea. And I'm going to go put it on the trailer. So if you guys want to watch that, let's see, uh, let's see how that works. And I'm going to take it over with the S, or I'm going to move it around here on this property with the S10. I'm not going to um, get the Dodge all involved because it's just a big truck. So there you go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Ready? Oh, yeah.
don't need no stinking ramps. I did put jack stands under the back end. Well, there you go. Maybe that's the last view of this. We'll see if homeboy shows up with some cash money um, to pay me. All right, well, there you go. Got a new clutch in the 155D, the old Yanmar. Yeah, buddy. All right, got to go. Got to run. S